Hello. Hello everyone from um, Highland Tech Hub Inverness, uh, otherwise known as Code Inverness. Uh, how are we all doing? Um, welcome to our first ever live session. Um, some of you will be in primary school, some of you will be at home. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Robert Fraser. Uh, you can call me Rob. Uh, I'm going to be delivering your lesson today on Scratch Coding. Now, I've done. Uh, you can call me Rob. Uh, I'm going to be. Yes, one second. Your lesson. Uh, I need to just scratch coding. Now, I've done. Yes, one second. Your lesson. Uh, I need to just scratch coding. Now I've done. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. How do I mute my audio down? Uh, I need to just scratch coding. Now I've done. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. How do I mute my audio? So I think uh, apologies for the technical uh, issues. This is the first ever time I've done this uh, live. I'm certainly not uh, live on YouTube before. All my lessons have been live, but previously but they've been in person uh, i'm really lucky today to be um joined by daryl who's going to keep us right with the production side of things he's dealing with the broadcasting and everything like that and also we've got julie here as well so julie actually is employed uh, she works as a computer programmer and she's going to be there uh, looking at your comments and your questions and let me know if you have any uh, issues or feedback as we go along do you want to say hello julie Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know if she can hear me. Uh, we will get these technical uh, things ironed out for the for the next time. So you're going to just have to bear with us uh, on the first lesson. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my presentation screen, and I'm going to just talk you through what we're going to be learning about today. Feel free use the YouTube comments, get in touch with us, and uh, somebody will reach out to me. Uh, with your questions and uh, I'll, I'll provide answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over uh, so that you can see what I've got prepared for you today. So I've introduced everyone. Uh, the mentors today is me, uh, Rob and uh, Julie, and we've got Daryl on the broadcasting. So in classic kind of uh, teaching style, I'm actually going to put the first question to you guys. Hopefully you can all hear me uh, nice and loud and clear, but I want you all to take a minute to think about why do you want to learn to code? What do you want to get out of this uh, session, either today or as we move forward? Uh, is it just part of the, the, the lesson that you've got today, or is there something specific that you want to want to build? So I just want you to take a moment, if you've got a teacher, in front of you, feel free to shout your answers at your teacher. If you've got a parent that's nearby, feel free uh, to shout at them too. Uh, if there's nobody with you and you're just watching this uh, on the live stream, it might be a nice idea just to write it down. Why is it you want to learn to code? I'm not going to give you too long to think about it. It's just really the first thing that comes to your, to your head. I want to tell you about why I love coding. I think coding is one of the most creative things that you can do. With coding, we can actually create things from nothing. So I don't know if you've got a picture in your head about somebody who does uh, coding. If somebody who does programming, it might be somebody who works alone, you know, in front of their computer, sitting there all day. But actually coding is a very creative problem solving activity. We work in teams usually, um, and, and it's really important to, to build that sense of that you need to be able to problem solve and you need to be able to be creative. And it may be not the skills that you think of straight away when you think about uh, coding and programming. It can be quite an intimidating subject when people first come to it. And the great thing about the program that we're gonna to use today, which is called Scratch, some of you may have used it before, is it's really straightforward uh, to create things, uh, create animations, create games uh, from scratch, pun intended. 
So we're going to create something new today. I've got lots of challenges um, laid ahead for you today. We're going to try and squeeze as much as we can uh, in this hour. So um, excuse me if it feels like I'm moving forward pretty quickly, but uh, we've got a lot to get through. So the format of uh, the way that I want to do it today is I'm going to explain to you how a piece of code works. So I'm going to actually show it to you. I'm going to build it for you. And then I want you to try it yourself. But see, when I'm explaining it to you, I really want you to pay attention to the YouTube um, channel, to the video channel. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. Pay attention to what I'm doing on screen. And then I'm going to put up a little bit of a reminder. So I'm going to switch over when I'm showing you something in code like this. And I'm going to, I'm going to build something up for you. And then I'm going to ask you to try it, try it for yourself. I'm going to put up a slide that looks something like this. And this blue side is this blue slide is your reminder of what the tasks are that you need to do. And then if you ever get confused, the, the last uh, step is for you to ask questions on that YouTube uh, feed. And possibly there'll be a way for you to give us uh, feedback, possibly through uh, a questionnaire at some point. Um, so step one, listen and watch. Step two, give it a go yourself. And then step three, um, ask questions and give us your feedback on how things are going. And feel free to ask questions of each other. If you're, if you're doing this with someone else, you know, it's really important to learn how to collaborate. Hi, Rob, I'm back. Sorry about that. So, we're going to our first uh, task. I just want to explain a little bit about the Scratch interface. So some of you might have used Scratch before, some of you might be completely new. Uh, some of this, you might think, I don't need to know this, I know about Scratch, but I would still really like you to pay attention. The reason I want you to pay attention is because language is really important. So while I'm explaining things to on, on the screen, it's really important that you know which areas of the screen I'm talking about when I speak to you. So even though you might have used this before, I think it's really really critical, really important that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. So when I talk about tabs, I'm talking about this top left-hand corner up here. So you've got your code, your costumes, and your sounds. Now these tabs here all relate to your sprite, and you'll see that in the kind of the bottom right-hand or towards the bottom right-hand corner. I've got this area with the, the sprites highlighted as well. So when you've got a sprite selected, the same goes with the backdrop, but I've, I've highlighted this right here. These tabs in the top left-hand corner are, are relate to that sprite. And when I talk about tabs, I'm talking about those uh, tabs in the top left-hand corner. This is called your block palette. I might just call it blocks every now and again, drag a block, um, pick a blo block. I'll tell you to look for different types of blocks, either by their color or their name, possibly both. Uh, and this is where you'll find all the blocks where we're going to build your Scratch animation. Today's going to be an animation, spoiler alert. Um, in future lessons, uh, we'll probably, we will look towards building a game. Uh, so these blocks here, you click and you drag them into your code area. So this is your code area, it's the largest piece of the screen. Hopefully you're able to, to look at this uh, scratch screen while you're watching this YouTube video. Um, you'll be able to see that you can click and drag a uh, code from the block palette into the code area. Okay? And this is your stage. We call this your stage. This is what runs or what the end user will see when your program runs. Uh, in the top right hand corner of the stage, you'll see three buttons. The middle button is kind of highlighted in blue. That shows the, the format of the interface at the moment. If you were to click that uh, button to the left of the one that's highlighted, it would make the stage a little bit smaller. And if you click those um, four arrows to the right of that, it's actually going to make the stage cover your full screen. And that's really good once you've got a game or an animation kind of close to being finished, um, you, you're able to kind of see it how the end user would see it. Um, but most of the time, you're gonna have that middle uh, stage button selected. 
I've already mentioned this, this is your sprite panel. So when I talk about sprite panel, this is what I'm talking about. It shows which sprite you've got selected, the name, the location from the X and the Y coordinates. I'll probably do a whole lesson on X and Y coordinates at some point at the moment, so you don't have to worry too much about that. I do like my X, Y coordinates, and I'm, I'm gonna blow your minds and talk about a, a Z coordinate um, when you get to more advanced uh, kind of game making games, 3D games, uh, but at the moment we're just gonna deal with X and Y. You've got these buttons here, which are show. So you can, at the moment that I icon is highlighted so that you can actually see your sprite on the stage. You can hide it by selecting that eye with a line through it. It also tells you the size and the direction of your sprite. Bottom right hand corner is where you need to click. See that kind of icon of a cat and a plus button? That's where you need to click to add a sprite. And then we have backdrops. So down here in the bottom right hand corner, you've got your backdrops. That shows you at the top, and um, it shows you which backdrop is currently being used within the stage. And then there's a button down the bottom, a uh, blue kind of image uh, icon that, to add a new backdrop. That's a really quick tour of the user interface. Um, again, like I say, you may, uh, you may know this already, but I think it was really important to kind of go over. Now, I am going to ask, are you guys ready? I'm going to, I'm going to maybe come to Julie if, uh, if we can get some feedback on this. Are you guys ready to do some actual coding? Like I say, feel free yes. to shout at teachers. They love it, really. And when I say teachers, can you hear me, I'm, Rob? Can you hear me now? Guardians. I'm teaching at home at the moment. It's probably the hardest teaching job I've ever had. Okay. I'm going to assume that you're all ready. I'm going to assume there's loads of comments uh, rushing in, but I'm also going to move on. So remember, from this point on, it's watch, then it's do, and then it's ask questions, okay? So at the moment, I really get, want you guys to watch what I do, follow what I do. I know the temptation is to do it while I'm doing it, but trust me, you'll get a lot more from the lesson if you just watch while I do it and then take that opportunity. I will give you time to do it yourself, okay? And then we can talk a little bit about what's going on. Lots of comments okay. coming in, so keep on coming. Over to my scratch screen. At the moment, um, you can see I'm using the browser version. You may be using the uh, downloaded version. Um, either one works very much the same. This is the home screen when you come to, to on the, the browser. And it gives you some featured projects, you know, so things that the people at the Scratch community have highlighted and studios that have been kind of highlighted. You can have a look at these. Um, I'm not going to look at any of them just now, but in, in your own time, you can have a look at the projects that other people have posted. They're sometimes good if you see a really nice bit of code, you will, you'll actually be able to, to see inside and see how, how people have made uh, their, um, their animations or their games. Top right hand corner is where you sign in. So in order to save your projects, uh, in order to share them with our studio, you're gonna have to sign in. And you can see here, I'm signing in already, Code Club Inverness. And I feel terrible, but I forgot to give a shout out to everyone. Uh, although we're branded as Code Club Inverness, I think we've got people all over the Highlands. I'm in, in Daviet myself, and I think David Primary are tuned in. We've got uh, viewers hopefully in Codder, in Rosebank. Possibly we have viewers as far away as Durban in South Africa. Some Jamaica, we possibly have a viewer from Jamaica. I'd love to hear if any of you guys uh, internationally have managed to join us, uh, but we definitely have some people down in Glasgow that are gonna be joining us. Uh, we're called Code Club Inverness, but this should really be Code Club International uh, at the moment. And we also have uh, possibly some people joining us from England as well. So please, please get in touch with us in the comments if you come from any of these 
exotic places, including Helmsdale. I include Helmsdale in an exotic place. Helmsdale, yeah. Anyway, moving on. So I'm just going to sign in because it saved my password and my username. So you guys won't be able to see what my password is. So, but when you create your own account in order to save your game, you sign in and it just gives you this kind of home screen. I'm going to go to create, top left hand corner, to create a new project. Okay, now this looks exactly how I showed you in the presentation. I'm just going to build up a, a very simple game. Uh, I, I might build up a very simple animation to show you guys, okay? So I'm going to take a code block from the palette and move it into the code area. And I just wanted to show you this. If you click the code block while it's in the code area, it will actually um, move the character on the stage. So this is one way where we can kind of activate or run our code is just by clicking on it while it's inside the code area. I'm not too interested in the moving though. I want to do something a little bit interesting. Um, no offense to Scratch Cat, but I'm not a big fan of Scratch Cat either. So I'm actually going to choose a new sprite down in the bottom right hand corner. You can create your own sprite. You can create one by, um, you can create a random one or you can upload an image. But I'm actually going to click this again to choose a sprite. I don't know about you guys, if you've looked at any of these, I think the dinosaurs are brilliant uh, on uh, Scratch. So I'm going to add one dinosaur here, and I'm going to add another dinosaur here. And feel free, I've just added two dinosaurs there quite quickly, but feel free when it comes to your task to have a look. There's animals, there's people, there's, there's different fantasy elements, there's sports, there's foods, there's all different types of sprites to, to choose from. I want you guys to have a look through it uh, before you pick uh, the couple of sprites uh, that you're going to use for your animation. But these are my dinosaurs. This is what I'm going to choose. And I'm going to give them a new backdrop because I don't particularly like having them uh, on that plain white backdrop. So again, bottom right hand corner, choose a backdrop. Uh, no prizes for anyone who's going to guess which backdrop I'm going to choose. I really like this Jurassic backdrop for them. Okay. And just to finish this off, before I, I ask you guys to do the same, I'm going to have a look at my Dinosaur 2 sprite. And I, don't, I want them to face each other. Uh, so I'm going to go into the Costume chat tab while I've got my Dinosaur 2 selected. And this allows me to, to look at all the different costumes that are with this sprite, you know. Um, this one looks like he's sneezing, um, looking behind them. But you've got all these different costumes. Some have more than others, so don't worry if you've only got a couple of costumes. Some of them have quite a few uh, different costumes. It just happens to be that these dinosaurs have four. And this allows you to edit them. So you, you'll, you'll hopefully be familiar with this kind of paint interface if you want to make uh, changes to the sprite, uh, you could change the color of them, you could remove elements, you could add elements onto it. It's a very simple kind of uh, paint editor that you could use here to kind of um, customize them. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this first costume here uh, on the horizontal. You know what? I'm going to flip all the costumes just to be sure. Uh, I'm probably not going to use all the costumes, but I'm just going to flip them all on the horizontal so that they're facing each other. Okay, so I am going to switch it over to your challenge so that you can see this. I'm gonna give you a minute. But your challenge is on your devices is to add two sprites and a new backdrop. Okay, so I want you guys to Go onto your computers, choose two sprites that you like, and choose a backdrop. But take your time, take a minute. I need a, a little bit of a break to, to rest my voice. Um, so uh, good luck with your first challenge.
next the the next challenge so to speak so um hopefully everyone is with us so far okay Okay, I'm just going to switch it over back onto my, I'm trying to get back onto my uh, Scratch lesson. I seem to have lost it. Did I close it? Okay. It looks like I've actually closed my window, so I'm going to have to open this up again. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'll look at my stuff and see if it's saved in there. Yes, it is. That's a great thing about saving your work. Um, it's got me out of uh, a little bit of trouble there because uh, I think I must have closed the screen uh, when I was uh, going back. So everyone's got the two sprites and the backdrop. Let's get on with doing a little bit of coding, okay? So I'm actually going to change my dinosaurs' names. Um, I'm going to change this red Triceratops to Perry. And I'm going to have my green, I'm not sure what kind of dinosaur this is, so you guys can post a news if you have a better idea. Uh, I think it's maybe a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It looks a little bit like a T-Rex. Uh, so I'm going to call him Jerry with a G. So I've got Jerry and Perry, or Perry and Jerry. Anyway, so that I know uh, it's a little bit easier to identify them. And I'm going to start to code them. I'm going to start with Jerry, okay? So with Jerry, I'd like to change the looks of Jerry. So I'm just going to click this looks um, element here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just getting a message that can't see my screen. So I'm just seeing, is it better now? Um. Okay. Seems like I've got an error when I'm presenting my screen. Okay, I think that is my screen is that running. Sorry about that. We'll get better at this, hopefully, um, as we go on. But um, you can see this now. I've got my Scratch Editor. All I've done is I've changed to Terry and Jerry on the icons. Um, so now I'm going to start with the coding. OK, so I've got my two sprites. I've got my backdrop. And I want to add some code. So I'm looking at the Luke's purple tabs. And I'm going to say hello. I'm going to get Jerry to say hello to Terry. Uh, so let's, let's click on that, and you can see it says hello. Absolutely great. But you can also see that it stays there pretty much forever. Uh, I want to do something a little bit more interesting than that. Um, I want to get them to speak to each other. I'm, I'm going to build up my animation. So I want them to say hello, and then I want them to stop saying hello. So I'm just going to put another say block. I'm going to delete. The, the contents of it inside. So I've got one block that says hello, and then another block underneath that says blank. Uh, and what do you guys think will happen here? Any ideas? Right, let's click on it and see. Absolutely nothing. Okay, so what happened there? What happened there is that the computer executed the first statement, say hello, and then it executed the second one, say nothing, straight away. So our eyes aren't as quick as a computer. So what we need to do, we need to try and slow this down because if we put everything and the computer just executes everything in one big block, then we're not going to actually be able to see anything. So I'm going to put a wait one second here. So I've gone to the control tab and I've chose the wait one second block. 
and then I'll just pop that in the middle. So let's let's click that now. You can see there, he says hello. He waits one second, and then it's a blank message. Yeah. Okay. So that's our kind of first block of code. We're starting to get somewhere. But what if we don't want to execute our code? in this code block area. This is not how you would normally see an animation or a game, is it? You wouldn't wait to um, go inside the, the code to execute the code. We don't do that when you're playing on your, your Switch or your Xbox. You wouldn't, wouldn't be expected to access the code directly. So we want to access it from our, um, our stage area in the top right-hand corner. So the way that we do this is by creating an event. So if you were to click on the events tab, obviously don't do this just now, please just follow along just now, follow what I'm saying, and then um, you'll get another opportunity to, um, to do the task yourself. But what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the events tab and I'm trying to pick an event. Quite a common event is when the green flag is clicked then to execute the code. So the green flag is this flag here, uh, above the stage where we can click go and you see it has the same effect. It does ex execute that code. Um, I'm not actually going to use the green flag clicked one. I think I would like to use when this sprite is clicked. I actually want to make my animation an interactive uh, animation. So I'm going to say when this sprite is clicked, he's going to speak for one second. Brilliant. And then I'm going to do the same with Terry. I'm going to say, when this sprite is clicked, he's going to say, hello. He's going to wait for one second. And then he's going to say nothing. And saying nothing is the effect of clearing um, the, the hello statement. Because if we didn't have this say, say nothing block, Terry would just be saying hello forever. So I'm just going to add that in. Click on it and see if it works. And you see that works. Okay, great. I am gonna I'm gonna try and get a little bit smoother on my switchovers. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna boom enter. And here you go. It's your turn now. I want you to add that code to the sprites that you've um, created. It needs to be an event, it needs to say something, it needs to wait and then it needs to stop. So there's a little bit, of, uh, a few lines on both of your sprites uh, within your game. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that just now or to make comments. Um, can he hear you? Or? Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm hoping you've all manage to add that code to your uh, your sprites what i'm going to do now is we're going to go for the next one so i, I realize i'm moving uh, quite quickly here um so please anyone uh, feel free to give me feedback it's the only way i'm going going to learn uh, if you tell me what i'm doing wrong um but I'm going to switch over just now and I'm going to improve my code. Okay, so let's go back over. If we can. 
Okay, so hopefully you've all got this, you know, you're just saying hello, or you might have changed the hello statement to something else. Uh, you may have the sprite clicked or the green flag clicked events. Um, that's not so important. Please, if you're more confident, please feel free to, to change it to something that you like. But if you just want to follow along with what I'm doing, that's great too. Okay, so I've got Jerry and Terry, they're talking to each other, but it's not much of a conversation really, is it? Click on Jerry, he says hello, Terry, hello. It doesn't really go anywhere, it's not the best conversation. Let's assume that these guys are, are just out of lockdown and they've kind of forgotten how to speak to each other, um, but it's not the most exciting animation. I want to get them to talk to each other a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to replace these three lines here. I'm going to improve my code. It's a little bit of a trick, but you see this top block on the look statement. It actually says hello for two seconds. Now, what's the difference between doing these three lines and this one? I'll change this to one second so that it's the same values or variables. And now let's see. So I've got Terry selected. I've changed Terry's code. Let's see. It's exactly the same effect. So it doesn't matter if we use this one block of code or these three, they're actually the same. That's a little bit of a trick, um, but you'll find this in Scratch that it's got lots of useful blocks. This block here does the exact same as these three blocks here. So we always, and this is a rule that goes across, doesn't matter what language you're doing or what kind of programming that you're doing, you always want to use the the most the smallest block you want to use the smallest amount of words that you can that gets you that result quite often when i'm programming just as a kind of a sideline is that I'll, I'll start with this while i'm thinking of the ideas I'll, I'll, I'll start building this and then as i go along i start to find ways to improve it to make it shorter to make it cleaner and easier to read so what i'm going to do is i'm actually uh, I, I could leave this here because this will never execute um, as long as it's not attached to, to an event. So I can click on uh, Terry and you'll see how this, this block here is highlighted to show that that's actually what's running uh, in the computer. This isn't, if I click on the block, it was run. But actually when I click on Terry, this one runs. So just to save confusion, I'm actually gonna get rid of this one. Okay, so what am I gonna do now? I want to make it so that they have a little bit more of a, a conversation. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create an event. So this yellow tab here is an event, and I'm actually going to broadcast the message. So by dragging this broadcast message into the code, I click this drop down, and I'm going to create a new message. I'm going to call the message, hello. What effect does this have on our code? Let's click on Terry. Hello. It doesn't do anything. Nothing that we can see anyway. But what we're doing is behind the scenes, behind you know, in our code, this Terry is actually broadcasting to all the other different elements that are within our game that he said, hello. Why is this useful? Well, I'm going to switch over to Jerry. I'm going to take out this code from Jerry. I'm going to replace it with the say hello for one second block just so that it's kind of still nice and tidy. And now actually, what what can I what can I do with Jerry? Well, I don't want to make the animation so that when you have to click on all the different elements, I want it to seem like they're having a conversation. So I don't want him to say hello when the sprite is actually clicked. If I look at the events, I can actually use this block here when I receive hello. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to hopefully help you to see that. I should have maybe done that at the start. Um, but anyway, so you can see the difference here. So I've got when Sprite clicked and when I receive hello. So this is Jerry. When he receives hello, the message hello, he's going to say hello. So let's click on Terry. He says hello. And then Terry speaks. So Terry speaks. Let's have a look at Terry's code. And we'll, we'll go through this all together. Okay. So 
This is Terry. I've got Terry selected. When I click on Terry, he's going to say hello for one second. Then he's going to broadcast hello. And then I look at Jerry. When Jerry receives hello, he's going to say hello for one second. You see, again, you can see how that works. I'm actually going to expand that as well so that you can see this. So I'm going to click on Terry. He says hello. And then Jerry says hello back. Okay. So that's one way to make your animations a little bit more interactive. Obviously, if I go back over here, then I can click them until they say hello, that's fine. But actually, this is better. Okay. So, guys, as you can imagine, you've watched. Now it's your turn to do. I would like you to simplify your code and broadcast that message. Quite a few comments coming in. Uh, guys, I don't mind whatever. Um, you'll obviously have used different sprites, I think, uh, than I've used. If you use the same sprites, that's that's absolutely fine. But if you use different sprites and you'd rather than speak to each other about something else, it can be anything you like. It can be a uh, conversation like you have with your friends, it can be a joke, it can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be something uh, plain like hello, like what I've got. It doesn't even have to use the same sprites as I'm using. Um, what I'm interested in is that you're able to kind of follow along and, uh, and, and solve the problem, so to speak. Well, hopefully that's given you enough time. It's kind of hard to judge time when I'm sat here, obviously I can't see how you guys are uh, getting on, but maybe Julie can drop me a message uh, if she's uh, getting anything. If you drop me, I've got my LinkedIn open here, Julie, if you want to send me a wee message um, telling me uh, how people are getting on, uh, if I need to do anything differently. Okay. So, we're about 40 minutes in. Uh, you guys have done really, really well so far. If you've managed to stay with us, then I have to admit, I am impressed with your uh, dedication. Uh, so I will reward you with more code. Okay. So we've got them saying hello, but I'm actually wanting to kind of build on this now. And this is what we do when we're programmers. We create a little bit of code, we save it, we build on it, we build on it. And before you know it, you've actually got a big piece of code um, that can work in lots of different ways. So it gets more and more complicated as we go along. You guys are doing really well. And I'm gonna kind of build this up a little bit more. So we've got Terry, he starts the conversation when we click on him. Uh, but we kind of want to make, we want to make this a little bit more of a back, back and forth, don't we? So Jerry, he receives the hello and he says hello. And then I want Jerry to actually say something back to Terry. And um, because you probably have noticed on my, uh, when I was, hopefully you saw me when, when I started this YouTube channel, you may have noticed that my hair is a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit longer than I probably would like it. So I'm actually um, going to make a comment on Terry's hair because, you know, Terry's got these really cool spikes on his head. I'm just going to call that hair because that's just where my uh, mind is at the moment. So he's going to say hello for one second and then he's going to say, I like your hair for two seconds. This can be longer or shorter. Obviously, if you go for a longer message that you're going to say, you're going to have to give the audience a little bit longer uh, to actually read it. And um, so let's see how this plays out. I'm going to click Terry to start the animation. 
And he, said, and he does that. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Click on Terry, he says, hello. Hello, I like your hair. I think this speed there, it's all right. I, I, I think that's, that's pretty good. Now, how do we, how do we pass the conversation uh, back to Terry? Because we've said to Terry, we like his hair. I want you to shout out to your teacher if you've got the answer here. What's the answer I'm going to use to broadcast back to, to, um, to Terry when he says something? We're going to use control. Uh, we're going to use events, and we're going to broadcast. And I'm going to call it a new message, like, uh, like your hair. And the reason I'm giving um, these broadcast messages quite descriptive names is you'll notice as our code builds up, and um, it becomes more and more complicated, and it's really important. That's why I named them terry and jerry as well because the names of things are really important you might not think that they're important but as your your code gets more complicated if you've got good descriptive names then it's going to really help you make, make things a lot easier so i'm going to broadcast like your hair i'm going to go back to terry now and i'm going to say when i receive but i'm not going to put it underneath when this spread clicked so you see this i'm creating a whole nother blocks here yeah, when I receive, and it's not hello, when I receive like your hair, I'm going to say something back to Jerry. And I'm going to make it for three seconds. And this is the, this is the punchline of my joke. This is, this is a really great joke that I've been thinking about all day. So let's see if you like it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to take this silence to mean that all across the world, everyone is laughing at how hilarious my jokes are. Yeah, feel free. You can comment on YouTube how great my jokes are. I know this. You, you probably will be able to think up a better joke than this for your animation, and I've thought up for my animation. Um, <laughs> You know, there's nothing to stop you guys from trying. So I want to test that. Let's see if this works, and then we'll go over what's actually happening. So Terry starts when he's clicked. So we need to start the animation when he's clicked. There you go. I'm going to actually increase the size. So just so that you guys can get the full effect of this quite amazing animation. So click on Terry. Hello. Hello. I like your hair. Thanks, I grew it myself. Okay, so just to recap what we've done there. So Terry broadcasts hello. Jerry receives that hello. He says something back to Terry. You can say one or two things, you know. You could say three or four things. You could say as many different things that you, that you like here. You've got thinking, if you want to add a thinking uh, block in. Don't get too complicated, you know. It's, if, you've, if you've done this before, you feel comfortable, add more things in. One or two things, if you've never done this before, this is quite a lot. We're actually managing to get through quite a lot in this session. And um, I don't know if that's because I'm maybe going a little bit too fast but um if you just have a couple of things on this uh, other character that's absolutely fine but then you need to broadcast something back so once you finish your last line of whatever you're saying you need to include that broadcast with what you're broadcasting and then you go back to your other sprite and then you have a whole new set of instructions here based on that broadcasting then you can create a um you can create more text for that character. So you can see this working just one more time before, before I switch over to you guys. I click on Terry, hello, hello, I like your hair. He broadcasts back, like your hair, and Terry says, thanks, I grew it myself. Okay, we're getting quite close to the end of the challenges. I've got one more challenge after that, um, but I would really like to see if you guys um, can actually uh, build on that. Okay, so it's over to you now for a couple of minutes uh, to see if you can improve your code and have that conversation slash joke. I'd be really impressed if anyone can come up with a better joke than, than my joke.
Mm. It's still on though. Okay, guys, um, obviously, you probably want to come back to this maybe after the, the last lesson, but I think we've got time uh, really to do the last task um, before uh, we kind of wrap up for today. So I want to give you guys an opportunity to do that last task, and then you can kind of come back um, to building things up, okay? So I'm going to come out of this, and I'm going to uh, go back to my game my animation i keep calling it a game i don't know why i keep calling it a game it is just going to be an animation uh, that we're going to do today okay so i want to have so they've told each other a joke um what i want to do is i want to change the costume i want them to react to each other because at the moment if we look at him they're not reacting to each other they're, they're talking and it's okay because i mean, we could carry this on all day some of you have probably Probably got lovely conversations going. But there's no reaction between the characters. So to improve this, I would really like them to, to react to each other uh, when the when the punchline comes. So when um, when Terry says thanks, I grew it myself. What I want to happen is I want to use one of the other costumes to make it look like they're reacting to the joke. Now, some of you may or may not have kind of uh, costumes that have a joke kind of thing on them. Um, but I chose these guys because they actually have something um, in their costumes that I think is quite good. So if we look at the costumes of Terry, you look at this one. I mean, he could be sneezing here, but I like to think that he's actually laughing. You know, he's, probably, he's laughing at his own joke. So what I'm going to do in the code, and we can look at the costume, that's costume dinosaur 2D. So you've got A, B, C, D. That's his D costume. Looks a little bit like that. So at the end, once he says, thanks, I grew it myself, I want to switch his costume to dinosaur 2D. Yeah? And then, let's, well, let's play that. Uh, well, we actually have to switch him back first. Um, so we'll add the switch costume to A at the start so that um, effectively we need to, when the sprites click, we need to make sure, as you can see here in the in the game, in the game, in the animation, um, Terry is already laughing before he said anything. So what I'm doing is I'm adding another Luke's block in here to switch his costume back to A before he says anything. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, I think he likes his own. He likes his own joke, that's for sure. Um, I think it would also be quite good if Jerry joins him in. It might, it might not be the best joke in the world, but I think Jerry, being Terry's friend, uh, he is gonna. He's gonna be polite. He's gonna laugh anyway. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Have you ever laughed at a joke that you didn't find funny? Um, but we're 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 gonna we're gonna get Jerry to do the same. And how are we gonna do that? You guessed it, we're going to do it by using a broadcast event. So he's going to switch his costume to Dinosaur D and he's going to broadcast a new message and we're just going to call this laugh. And then Jerry is going to receive laugh. He, we'll check Jerry's costumes. So I've got Jerry selected. I'm going to look at Jerry's costumes. This is a, I think this is a brilliant uh, 
the picture for for Jerry the dinosaur. I mean, this could be anything. I mean, before it, it could be uh, uh, Terry could be sneezing or it could be laughing. Uh, I think I like to think that Terry's laughing here, but he could be about to eat something. If you were thinking about making a game where he was chasing something, you know, there's lots of different different things that you could use here. Here he looks a little bit worried. I mean, he, you could even use this animation here. Um, you know, because he would he would just look a little bit uh, just like uh, Terry said something quite strange. But I really like uh, this one, which is also his uh, his D costume. So I'm gonna uh, when I receive laugh, I'm gonna go back to my Luke's block and I'm gonna switch costume to dinosaur for D. But again, you can see there that um, they're both laughing. Uh, I've already changed Terry, so he switches back to his original costume at the start. Um, but I need to do something for uh, for Terry, uh, for Jerry, so that he does the same uh, switch costume to 4D. And then we'll probably have to wait for a couple of seconds, two seconds to laugh, I think is probably fair enough. And then I'm going to change his costume back to costume A. Yeah? So, again, let's just go through this again. Terry, when he's clicked, he's going to change his costume to what I want it to be at the start. He's going to say hello, broadcast hello, which is going to be then picked up by Jerry. He's going to say hello back, I like your hair. He's going to broadcast like your hair, which then passes the program back to Terry. When he receives like your hair, he says, thanks, I grew it myself for three seconds. And then he switches to costume 2D, which is his laughing costume and broadcast laugh. And then we go back to Jerry, who picks up that laugh broadcast, changes his costume to the laughing costume, waits two seconds, and then he changes it back. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, for the first one, it looks like Jerry's not changed, but it will change at the end, so. Yeah. Terry, Terry just keeps laughing because he, he loves his own joke, so he's just carrying. So let's just try that again. You see now, Jerry's back to, to, to normal. Yeah, and now they're both at the same time. Jerry stops laughing after an appropriate amount of time, Terry doesn't, because he loves his joke. Okay, back to you guys. This is how I want you to finish it off. I want you to add some costumes so that they react to what your characters are saying to each other. So you might not be using the same text that I'm using. You might not be um, telling a joke. You might be just having a conversation. Whatever's happening in your animation, I want you to, to switch it. And then we're gonna wrap up today's lesson, okay? I'm sorry if um, you've maybe not got to the end of that, but I do want to take the last five minutes um, to kind of show you how to share your uh, animations with us and also to to share your projects um, 
on our studio. Uh, so don't worry if you've not got to the end or you've not been able to add in the, those extra costumes or anything. Um, we've really got through a massive amount of content today. I actually used up all of the content. I thought I've had far too much. I, I, I thought we could have probably stopped a couple of tasks ago. But if you've managed to follow everything up until now, you've done very, very well. For your first lesson, broadcasting messages, uh, you've learned about functions, you've done, you've done a lot of stuff today, uh, so you should be very, very proud of yourself. It, and if you've managed to listen to me for the best part of an hour, I think you deserve a badge. You, certainly, you, you, know, you, you can certainly say you've, you've, you've had a hard day's work listening to me anyway. So for the last thing, I really want to show you guys how to share your animations with us. And uh, so we have a studio and um, you don't have to share it directly with our studio. You can just save it on the Scratch and um, uh, you can save it locally if you've downloaded the, the Scratch um, client or if you're on the browser, you can just save it and then, you know, nobody will be able to see it if you don't share it. But if you're proud of what you've done and you should be because you've done really well, um, then I'd like to show you how to save it, I, to share it rather than just save it. Let's go over to my scratch. So the first thing you should do when you're sharing an awesome animation like this is that you need to give it a name. So if you go up to the top here, and this is really good if you want to do more on Scratch, you want to do more tutorials, you see this light bulb here to the left, that's a really great source of extra tutorials that you can work on in your own time. It takes you through step by step. I'm not going to click on it just now, just in case it takes me away uh, in this last couple of minutes. I'm going to call my animation Terry and Jerry Volume 1. A nice descriptive um, name i think we're going to see more of terry and jerry hopefully they're going to have lots of adventures lots of games but give it a nice name describing you know what it is if it's an animation or or who the main character is think of a good title and then you click this button here called share and then the share is great and um, if you haven't given it a title it'll, it'll prompt you to do up here and um, you can add instructions and notes see this game here or I keep calling it a game, sorry. See this animation, we can call it a game technically because you have to actually click within the screen, but nobody would be able to, to, to play this animation or game. See, normally you would play it by uh, hitting the screen flag, but if you hit the green flag, nothing happens. So actually to run the animation, click on Terry. And will most people know who Terry is? Not. Possibly so. Then I'll put the Triceratops, and you guys can tell me if I've spelled Triceratops correctly. It definitely has got a couple letters. Um, I'm sure Daryl will tell me if that's uh, not spelled correctly. And then uh, credits. Uh, I use uh, Scratch sprites to make this game. So if you um, download sprites or download things off the internet to, to use in your, your game, make sure that you give people credit if they've created things. I want to leave comments on because I want to know what you guys think of Terry and Jerry. Jerry. But see if you don't want people to comment on it, um, you can just click this button here and it'll turn commenting off. Um, this would just share it onto the Scratch website. But what I want you guys to do is an extra step, which is to add it to the studio. You don't have to do this, but this will give us an opportunity or it'll allow us to be able to see the kind of work that you've done and see how you're progressing uh, for future weeks. If you click add to studio, I'm following Code Inverness Studio, so I can just click on them here and press OK. Um, but what you'll need to do is probably go Code Inverness Studio. Oh. Inverness in the search, and if you, you have to follow us uh, on the studio, this is a code in Vanessa Studio. You can tell it's us because we've got uh, the logo here. And if you follow them, when it comes to sharing it, you'll be able to you'll be able to share it very simply. Uh, okay, so that kind of brings us to the end of today's lesson. There's a couple of things I just want to go over before I let you guys go. Um, so to summarize what we 
we've learned about today. So today we've gone over the interface, where everything is, what it's called. Yeah, so you think about the different elements of the Scratch interface, very simple to use. Don't be afraid to uh, experiment with it. You will not be able to break Scratch so you can do effectively whatever you want. We learned about events, different types of events. We did, learned about the on-click event, we learned about the green flag events, and we learned about broadcast events. So three different types of events, that's amazing for your first lesson in Scratch. We also learned about ordering your code, yeah? We, we ordered things um, in the way that we wanted the characters to speak to each other. Very important, doesn't matter what programming language you're doing, ordering your code, hugely important. We learned about costumes. We learned how to change the costumes depending on how the, co the characters uh, talk to each other. And we did a lot on broadcasting messages. So that's a massive amount um, to do in one session. So other tasks for you, uh, other tasks for you at the end of this uh, lesson, in the description, you'll see a Kahoot quiz that you can do that can test your knowledge now that you're, you've been introduced to Scratch. Um, you can add more events to your project and you can also share your animation with the Inverness Code Club Studio. That brings me to the end of our live bro broadcast. Um, I can't see, hear Julie, um, but Julie has messaged me on um, on my phone to say that we're getting good comments back on uh, the YouTube channel. I'm just pleased that people managed to make it to the end. We're going to be back here again next Wednesday at 2 o'clock for more Scratch. If you find this too simple and you want more of a challenge, um, I don't know, I'm going to stop presenting so Daryl can put up the links to the other uh, code uh, Inverness events that are going to be running. Um, so I'm going to stop presenting here and hopefully Daryl put up up a card so that you guys can see um, what else is coming up on uh, the Code Inverness. But we've got on Saturday, we have a Scratch advanced session from two to three that will be run by Anya. So those of you who find it easy uh, will be able to, to do that. And then we are going to be doing something on Python, I think, as well. And I'm going to stop talking. I'm hopefully going to turn my sound and things back on so Daryl and uh, Julie can can maybe uh, wrap up and come to me with any questions or or anything as well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining us. Some great comments. Looking forward to uh, seeing you all next week. So we'll get the sound issues sorted out. Sorry, you can hear me for quite a bit of that, but we'll, we'll get things sorted for next week. So well done, everyone. Yeah, well, uh, well, you've got to remember, we're learning as well. So if you've managed to, to make it through this lesson, it can only get better from here, really, can't it? You know? Um, but well done, everyone. Uh, if you've got any questions or whatever, I'll stay with Daryl and, and Julie, and we'll see if we can make our way through that comments uh, before we, we finish up. But I think that brings us to the end of the live broadcast. So thank you, and goodbye from Inverness. Okay. Bye, everyone. Remember, everyone, you can always ask us any questions on our Twitter or our Facebook, as well as finding us on YouTube as well.